Unit 5, learning target number 3, create ratio tables to solve real-world problems. So let's start at the beginning. What is a ratio table? That's kind of a weird word to use, a ratio table. What does that mean? A ratio table is just a chart. It's all it is. It's really just a chart of equivalent ratios for a situation. So if I was going to make a ratio table for the number of miles I ran, if I ran one mile in seven minutes, one mile in seven minutes, then I might say that I ran two miles in 14 minutes. I would run in three, mi three miles, it would take me 21 minutes, etc. It's just a group of equivalent ratios for any situation, and they put it in a box that looks like this, and then they label it, and they say miles, and then they say minutes, and now I have created a ratio table. So let's take a look at this ratio table down here and see if we can fill in the values for our ratio table down here. This is going to be the problems that we're looking at. We're either going to create a ratio table or we're going to fill in values in a ratio table. Here's our situation. Jan uses two gallons of red paint for every gallon or one gallon of red paint. So help me by writing that as a ratio. Over here, you'll see we've written that out as a ratio up on the top level of our chart. One gallon of blue paint, one gallon of blue paint, is equivalent to two gallons of red paint. If we use one gallon of blue paint, we're going to use two gallons of red paint. So if we look down, we can see that we have the next step in the chart is to find our next equivalent ratio. If we have two two gallons of blue paint, two gallons of blue paint here, how many gallons of red paint do we have? Well, first we need to figure out what the relationship is, right? To get the red paint, we had to multiply by what? And to multiply by two. One times two is two. Does that hold true for the other ones? Well, yes. To get three gallons of blue paint, uh, we multiply that by two to get the gallons of red paint. And did we do the same thing here for five and ten? Yes, we did. So all of these are being multiplied by two. So what are we going to do to get the number of gallons of red paint for the gallons of two? blue gallons of paint. What we wind up with is whatever this is we're going to multiply by two and we'll get four. Four gallons of red paint for every two gallons of blue paint. And then further down we now have eight gallons of red paint. How do we figure out how many gallons of blue paint we have? Well if you look at it from left to right what you see is that we are actually dividing what's on the right here. We're dividing that by two. So if we want to go this way if we want to go this way, we're dividing. If we want to go this way, then we are multiplying. So in this case, we're going to divide. 10 divided by 2 is going to be 5. So we'll divide 8 by 2, and we'll get 4. And that will be our completed chart. Now we want to predict. We want to predict, which means make a guess about, make a reasonable and educated guess. Predict the number of gallons of red paint used if Jan uses 10 gallons of blue paint. So over here, if we were to come down our chart and we were to sit with 10 right down here, how many gallons of blue paint would we get? Well, if you remember, when we wanted to go this way, when we wanted to go from blue paint to red paint, we multiplied by 2. We multiplied by 2. So here we'll need to multiply by 2 as well. And what will we get? We'll get 20 gallons of red paint. Does that make sense? Well, let's look back at our original statement. Jan uses two gallons of red paint for every one gallon of blue paint. Two gallons of red paint for every one gallon of red paint. In fact, this does predict it quite nicely. Ten gallons of blue paint will give us, will require 20 gallons of red paint. Let's see how graphs and charts can work together. For every boy that plays clarinet, let's say every one boy, every one boy that plays clarinet, there are three girls who play clarinet. Three girls. Three girls who play clarinet for every one boy. So we can write that as a ratio, as one boy to three girls, or if we want to do three girls to one boy. So one boy to three girls is what I'm going to go with here. For every one boy, there are three girls. Now, we're going to use the ratio table to complete the graph. Over here, we've got our ratio table right there. 
it's not completely filled in. And over here, we have our graph, and it's not completely filled in either. We've got to use them to fill in each other. So we'll look over here. For every one boy, there are three girls. We'll follow our graph over here. This will be the uh, number one here for the number of boys. We've got the number of boys on the bottom and girls on the side. Girls right over here. So for every one boy, there are three girls. So we'll put our point right there. I'll make that a nice red color so we can see it. One boy means there will be three girls. So now we have our chart completed. And again, we can draw our little arrow there and see what that looks like. And put our arrow right through here and see that that does in fact look exactly like all our other uh, all our other ratio graphs that we used. So now let's take a look at filling in the graph from the chart. This now says to use the use the graph to complete the ratio table. So over here on our graph, what do we have? Get that out of the way. We see that two boys is equivalent to six girls. So we can fill this out over here. We'll say two boys. For every two boys, there'll be six girls that play clarinet. And then for every three boys, for every three boys, there will be nine girls who play the clarinet. So three, two, nine.